is extremely important to have this conversation right now. And I want to acknowledge Mr. Shrikant Singh, who's been kind enough to join us to understand what the industry is thinking and to be able to take those thoughts back to the government and to be able to put that into practice. Um, I have a fantastic panel and I want to get started as quickly as possible to make the most of the time that we've been allotted. I want to understand, um, you know, very quickly we'll, we'll, we'll do a round. I want to understand what your biggest concern is as far as RERA is concerned and what you think the biggest win or the biggest advantage to industry or to lenders or to funding or to law is going to be from this new legislation. Um, I, I also want to ask about the fact that we know that the deadline for states to release their rules for ERA is the 31st of October. Um, we've always in the media watched and been aware of the fact that Maharashtra was at the forefront of these rules and possibly will be the first state. But are the rest of the states ready and do they have the ability really to be able to understand and put out rules for such a complex industry and such a complex act? Um, Mr. Shroff, I'll start with you. Yeah. What is your biggest concern right now uh, with rules uh, of RERA? Um, my biggest concern about RERA and rules both is this that the industry has several real and I would say uh, challenging questions with the rules need to answer. RERA, we must appreciate, is a central law which is going to apply to the length and breadth of this country. But every local body, every, every local area such as Maharashtra, for example, will have its own uh, situation and ground realities. We already have MOFA in place from 1963. We are leaders in this country for the purpose of giving a legislation which has pioneered. And the biggest concern is that this is a very ambitious piece of legislation. It has administrative power the RERA has. It has judicial power. It is supposed to be also advising government. It is also looking into various aspects which if one single body is, I would say that is larger than life, which we are expecting to really fulfill our perceptions and... Is that, is that expectation according to you unreal, unrealistic or do you think that we can actually achieve those things in, with this regulation? At this point of time, I would say it's ambitious okay. and uh, to my mind, the rules will really supply and will really indicate as to how the state government is looking at it because we'll have to make them realistic and to meet the, the local needs as the people have. Otherwise, the industry will come to a, a, a quite, if not grinding halt, it will come to quite a, a, a standstill for a very, very long time to come to get adjusted and to come to terms with this law. Mr. Otherwise, this law is a perfect law, which I think uh, was awaited for a long. It's little too late to introduce, but it has come now. All right. Mr. Hirandani, uh, we know that the Union Minister for Housing has kept saying that RERA is meant for regulation and not for strangulation. It's, it's one of the phrases that he keeps you know, mentioning every time he's talking about RERA. It's challenging, though, to make sure that the industry is not strangulated because we're already gasping for air in this industry. Do you believe that RERA right now, the affordable housing projects right now, housing for all, all going at the same time, is it possible to be able to do all of this? Do you think that RERA will actually manage to regulate without strangulating? See, there are two aspects. The first is that uh, the consumer and the general public demanded more transparency and more teeth in the law. And I think the polity followed it. Which, so I can't say, can accept is, I, can't blame, I can't blame either the bureaucracy or the polity to really bring in such a law. On the other hand, what has happened is that with the industry going through a difficult period, the bringing in of this law at this point of time is certainly going to create problems for a large number of ongoing projects. So I would say we need to have two positions in place. The reality at the ground level where we have difficulty in the projects getting implemented and also the prospective ones. Both need to be regulated, but the transition period needs to be handled. Otherwise, what Mr. Shroff just mentioned over here could be an unbelievable problems could be created on the ground. But at the end of the day, I'm very happy with the law. I'm very happy, but we need to roll it out carefully to see that the benefits come out of it and the industry doesn't get into a problem while implementing May it. I ask you to be a little more specific because Mr. Singh is also listening. And if we're talking about Maharashtra particularly, what would you say is the one thing you want the government to be careful of? If you're saying be careful during rollout, what is, 
Be careful how? I think the only thing that we need to be careful of is for the ongoing schemes because a large amount of money is not available to the developers to complete the projects and at the same time uh, it, it, uh, there has to be a solution for such projects. Uh, I see the concern of the government in order to answer the issues of the ongoing projects in, through the RERA route. But I think this is an issue that I would uh, be empathetic with government because they have to look at the end of the consumer. But if you don't answer this problem, then the ongoing projects will not get registration as we would like it to happen. So are you saying uh, relax the norms on ongoing projects or don't register them at all, leave them out of the purview of the no, law? No, what is your not what is at your all, not at all. It's only the funding requirement in the ongoing projects which is going to be an issue. Okay. in terms of how this is going to get completed because they're already stressed. So we can't add stress to those projects because we need to get them completed. But I understand that we need to bring in this regulation. I'm happy with the regulation. Okay. Sudeep, Sudeep Malik, you have, you've analyzed how ongoing projects will be brought under regulation. We were just talking about it. Do you believe that it will cause that kind of stress? I think it will cause a very serious stress. I think what we need to do in ongoing projects is to, is to deal with willful defaulters and people who have failed because of reasons beyond their control. So if you, if you or, or there is a delay beyond their control. So ongoing projects, how do you bring in money which has already been collected? How do you, uh, how do you sort out issues of delay? I think there should, be, there should be a thought process in the government to produce a sunset clause for, for ongoing projects and says, uh, you know, my concern with what you said, and I want to bring in Abhishek here as well. You said willful defaulters and people who who have genuinely delayed, default, genuine, delayed genuine. De because of how do you tell the difference? Do you believe that the law actually, or the, the RERA in its current form, differentiates between financial stress or uh, you know? Uh, are we talking about earthquake, flood, that sort of uh, conditions out of my control? How do you tell the difference no, between beyond the default and someone... Uh, reasons beyond the control has a wider uh, ramification. You know, it RERA restricts the, de the definition of how to, uh, what is impossible to perform. Even Indian law, contract law says if it is impossible to perform, it is impossible to perform. You cannot restrict, you cannot say that, uh, you know, it is, uh, you will have to perform. Say, I, I t tell you that I will take you to the moon. If it is impossible to perform, the, it is void ab initio. Or, or say, suppose for example, if I contract with you that I will come to your show every Saturday and some of the Saturdays I fall sick, those Saturdays will be, will be, will be the contract for those Saturdays will be deemed to be void. So, so we will have to take into consideration a realistic view about, uh, you know, a person who is defaulting. Then RERA will have to, if they have to implement this, We'll have to say whether there was an approval delay. I believe environmental approvals have been delayed for a longish period of time. So people have suffered there. You cannot really say that, well, for this reason, you will still be penalized. There are laws, there are existing laws dealing with everything. Consumer law is there, contract law is there. If you delay, if, if, if there are provisions under the Contract Act. Right. You know, uh, Abhishek, just pulling in from that, the fact of when we talk about the real estate industry and the general mood in the country right now between whether or not people see malicious intent or the intent to cheat or just financial distress and how the judiciary and the police and everybody are dealing with it and how ideally this law should deal with it. Because there is, uh, you know, there, there is a jail term that has been mentioned in, in the regulation. Is there an issue there? Is there a concern there as a developer? Is, is there a concern in execution and to be able to tell the difference between what is intent and what is not? Uh, as Mr. Malik mentioned, uh, this law, you know, collates together a number of existing laws. It, it covers parts of the contract act, you know, in Maharashtra we've had MOFA for a long time, etc. And tries to make sure that these laws uh, can, you know, sort of act possibly in harmony. Uh, what uh, one has a challenge over here is that it continues to say that all other applicable laws will continue to apply. And therefore the challenge arises is that how do you have so many disparate laws written at many, many different points in time, all working together and yet making sense. You know, today you have the judiciary, you have the consumer forums, you have the appellate authority under RERA, so on, etc. And the challenge that I foresee coming out of this law is that 
uh, you may end up with creating a, ja a road jam on the industry and the consumer because there are so many different and disparate sides of the regulation which will need to get harmonized before this becomes effective. Is that a road jam that will cause an increase in prices and a decrease in supply? I am not sure about the increase in prices because increase in prices is not only caused by a decrease in supply but by other demand factors like demand and the macroeconomic environment. But I certainly feel that uh, you will have a number of the fly-by-night or, or operators who don't have the right intent disappear from the industry which is very good for the industry as well as for the consumer and there will in general be a slowdown in supply because the regulatory requirements or the regulatory burden ha will increase. So yes, there will be a decrease in supply whether that is an increase in prices or not, it will really depend from time to time. Right. I also want to ask the developers on, on the panel, um, how does the, the three year jail term make you feel about the fact that you are at the end of the day in a business that is being viewed as commercial slash possibly criminal? Well, uh, obviously that uh, the term is extremely dangerous and uh, can be done. And I think as uh, Mr. Abhishek Loda just mentioned, they are governed by so many other regulations that if there are other reasons for your delays are taking place, and that's why the question of uh, what Mr. Malik said about willful defaulter being intentionally trying to default on this whole issue because of uh, rise in prices or whatever other reasons that they may have, I think that distinction is uh, needed to be made in order to catch that type of person. And somebody who is actually uh, gone through a, 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 a crisis because the economy has collapsed. Let's say there's a war with Pakistan tomorrow but the and the entire that, uh, you know, that, the whole that only gets pro proven in, in your day in court. But yeah. in the meantime, the police have the ability to file an FIR, make an arrest, yes. uh, make a developer stay overnight in jail, perhaps waiting for bail. Is, see, I mean, that's, that's an uncomfortable thought for anybody in this room, I would assume. See, the issue is very simple. I think the developers as a community have failed to get the confidence of the people, the media and the public and the polity in general and the bureaucracy. So the bureaucracy and the polity and the government have mourned the other end of the pendulum and said now we want to punish you, reprimand you and put you into jail. That's the other end of the pendulum that you have gone to. I think somewhere down the line it should have been middle of the line. And the second part, which is more important, what Abhishek Loda said, was the fact that because you have multiple laws, the regulator has zero control on the other departments. So if an, a, a building occupation certificate is not being issued because that man doesn't want to issue it, the regulator has no control over him, but he has control over the developer to penalize, punish, and imprison him. So I think the issue is slightly different, that we needed the law to have more bite, not only on the developer, but also on the other people who govern the regulations and permissions that is granted. Anyway, the polity decided against it, and uh, today the law is as it is, and we will try to make the best of whatever is the situation today. But one thing is certain. The law was needed simply because a large number of people who invested in the market got into difficulty and there was no choice to change that. We have to face the situation as it is. Ashok, between the 70% escrow and the three-year jail term, what are you more nervous about? Between the two or sorry? Between the 70% escrow account and the three-year jail term, what causes you to lose sleep at night? You. <laughs> Take up the newspaper. Every day there is some developer in trouble. Yeah, maybe in the city, maybe in the Grameen area. And I think police has taken a wrong view. The orders that have come from the DGP have, I mean, not been interpreted in the right way. And they're just after developers. What I see, I'll come to 70% later. What I see is that uh, our second generation doesn't want to get into this business. They are scared to the T. I mean. They don't want to go to jail. They don't want to, you know, deal with this kind of a situation which they've never, they've come from Howard, they've come from Wharton. So this is a real, real concern as far as the existing law is concerned. Coming to 70%, I think uh, 
it will only bring in more financial discipline more governance so it's a welcome thing the historical land cost as it is is including the 70% so there's no cost for us to worry about that and if your intent is good the projects will definitely be delivered on time and that's what i think the authority always wanted yeah quick show of hands of how many people believe that the 3 year jail term that is mentioned in rera is too harsh for the real estate industry how many of those hands belong to developers <laughs> all, <laughs> all of them all. I, I, you know, I also want, I want to consider this, and, and I'll come to you, Mr. Vedran, but Mr. Shroff, we are, we are living in a country right now where the biggest developer in this country has told the highest court that it does not have money to refund 20 crore rupees to its mm. customers. So we're not talking about the fringe players, we're not talking about what's being called fly-by-night or the, you know, one plus four floors, we're talking about the largest, what was once the largest developer in this country, Unitec, who turned around and told the court that we don't have money to refund buyers. So now, in, in that light, so these are not ordinary times. This is not an ordinary industry, Mr. Shroff. No doubt, this is a, this is very, I would say that, uh, uh, stressful times through which did the economy as well as the country and the real estate industry is passing through. I'm closely associated for over four decades with this industry and I believe that liquidity is a is even not possible to be dreamt of situation at this point of time and I believe customers are few and far between and there is a lack of faith and lack of faith in the system. Let me tell you this and I'm addressing this to not only people sitting here but I'm little, I would say that, encouraged to speak about this because Mr. Shikhan Singh is sitting here. That there is a lack of faith in the system. A man who goes to book a flat with Unitech or with Supertech or with any builder in Maharashtra, if it is under construction project, he says, whatever you may promise, what will environment do, do you have control? When your OC doesn't come, do you have control? If SRA gives you notice, do you have control? I am not going to trust it, I want lock and key. Now, where do you produce lock and key premises every morning? So, to my mind, there is a there is a systemic situation which we need to really take care of, and that is what is expected of these rules when they are framed. That that and there is there is sufficient provision in RERA for the government to really get into action and have their local bodies and planning authorities also combined and their single window situation can emerge out of it. And RERA has a power to deal with the corporation also, mind you. So, to my mind, the... the no, but where does RERA have the power to deal with the corporation? Where in the law does it the mention law the says power to deal that with... you can also go to RERA for the purpose of planning authorities, various amendments, etc., which are granted or not granted. So, there is a possibility that you can also bring before RERA those laws, those people... I, I, who... I'm not sure if it's advised to go up against you on the law, but uh, <laughs> it says that the regulator, if, if I'm not mistaken, may make a suggestion to the state government to set up... The advisory part advisory, is there with yes. RERA, as well as there is in the event of there being any complaint regards the approval, etc. The wording also. of that clause is very weak, sir, in comparison the, to a three say, jail term, which is very... It's a flavor. It's a flavor of the law which I'm talking about. Okay. But at the same point of time, the government needs to do in the rules, if they want this industry which is contributing to the state economy and the national economy, we need to bring about the rules which will which will create some assurance and the faith in the minds of people who deal with a real estate uh, player. Otherwise, he is isolated because it's not within his control to really promise what, deliver what he promises. Mr. Vaidyanathan, what is your deepest concern as a bank lender it, as far as RERA is concerned in its current form? Yeah, I would like to look at the larger picture. You see, all of us are here discussing all these uh, issues, challenges because of one person, that is the consumer. Uh, the consumer's interest, if it is not protected, which I would feel that in the, somewhere down the line was forgotten for uh, maybe, you know, uh, whatever reason it was, uh, maybe greed, whatever it was, or not by all the players, but by some players, but the whole industry got the bad name. So as long as uh, anything is being done to protect the interest of the consumer, uh, it, it is going to lay a strong foundation for the industry to grow. Now, today, we all know, uh, RERA is not there. It is going to come. What is the status of real estate uh, industry today? Uh, you see, uh, the, uh, the sector is uh, not able to borrow. 
although there is need for a uh, lot of borrowing. There are a lot of sources from where the industry can borrow, but they are not able to borrow. Uh, also, uh, we would like to, uh, you see, uh, as long as consumer is there. So, you believe as long as the consumer is looked after and the industry is regulated, you'd be more comfortable lending to this industry as a banking sector? Definitely. You see, with more transparency, uh, uh, definitely uh, there will be uh, more uh, no, uh, lenders uh, entering the scene and uh, uh, there will be, we also, uh, uh, we also uh, uh, look forward to a situation wherein the industry will be looking more towards uh, formal lenders. Uh, today, they are, uh, the industry is able to launch, pre-launch and generate uh, the funds through bookings, uh, even without any approvals. That is not going to be there. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the builder has to uh, invest money for getting all the approvals. And uh, once all the approvals are in place, then only the construction can uh, begin and uh, the project can be launched. So, so we, we talk about, uh, I'm sorry, we talk about construction finance and we talk about cost of construction, which is part of the 70% escrow. And I'll invite uh, the three developers to answer this question. Abhishek, I'll start with you. Um, there is something called speed money that is used to get approvals. That's not normally on paper, which is part of cost of construction, which is, is an open secret. Everybody in this room knows it happens, that there's a certain amount of money that it needs to be used in order to extract uh, pr proposed, uh, approvals from local authorities. Can RERA in some way clean up that system and make sure that approvals are completely over the table, that no palms need to be greased, that there is nothing in that system there that costs money, so everything then can actually just be white and clean and well maintained? I think uh, across our country and uh, there is this great belief that laws uh, can change behavior completely. And I think we need to realize the fact that laws are, uh, are effective when they are implemented properly and fully. And India doesn't suffer from a shortage of laws. If you look at our uh, you know, legal framework, it is pretty robust. And we believe that every time there is a problem, instead of trying to fix the implementation, we try to fix the law. Uh, and I'm not answering your question uh, directly because clearly, uh, you know, whether uh, the government authorities will work uh, uh, to expedite uh, approvals uh, is not in the ambit of RERA, but that is the intent of the current government. Without RERA, we have seen that both the central government and the state government in Maharashtra have done a lot to make things clearer and more transparent. And that has uh, definitely over the last year and a half, two years, made it easier to do real estate development business in the state of Maharashtra at least. Uh, and therefore, I don't think you need a law to solve every, every problem. Okay. You have to have the right people and the right intent, and that itself makes things a lot, uh, a lot better. And I think that approach could even have been taken on the developer side. But anyway, that's a different debate. Could I have a raise of hands of developers in this room who believe that in the last year and a half, two years, doing business in Maharashtra from an approvals point of view has gotten easier? Mm -hmm. <laughs> My hand is up. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hirnani? Okay, so the two of you, uh, what are the two of you doing differently that you're able to get approvals that nobody else can get? No, I... <laughs> <laughs> Tell everybody, I'm sure everyone would appreciate the advice. Yeah, I'll tell you. The answer is very simple. While RERA doesn't provide any help in terms of easier approvals, the intent of the Chief Minister, Mr. Devendra Fadnav, is focused on trying to reduce the number of approvals required and the focus with the Municipal Commissioner of Mumbai and Thane to constantly say that we need to do it and to bring in the Right to Services Act is a clear-cut intention. Right to services the, doesn't apply on approvals of it construction. It does, it does, it does, it does. They have brought that into force, and they are bringing it into force if they haven't already done. That's what the statement of the Chief Minister. So a combination of RERA rules, which does not help us to achieve what you mentioned, and the right to services, on the other hand, bringing in that thing, a combination of these two hopefully will be done. And second, the Chief Minister constantly monitoring this aspect with the Municipal Commissioner. The intent is there, but I agree with the audience over here that the execution at the ground has not really happened. But the fact that the Chief Minister personally is driving it 
and the municipal commissioners have taken it into their hands to do it. I am praying, hopefully, that this will get executed at the grassroots also once RERA brings it into force, because otherwise... So, so you agree Rera, that there is intention, obviously, Intention at the, at the top level office, is fantastic. It's unbelievable. it has not trickled down to It the, has not trickled down yet. So the various tables within the BMC and the Thani Municipal Various authorities. There are still so need many to be greased. Of course. Yeah, so Mr. I agree with Niranjan Sake. Rome was not built in a day. It's taken time. It hasn't yet gone to the ground reality. But the intention is very clear. Smaller developers, obviously... Do you agree that the ease of doing business has improved over the last two years? It has substantially improved, yes. In what way? See, in early days, we ourselves used to go and, you know, personally get things maneuvered, get things done, okay? In whatever way we had to do it, we used to do it. But now, having certain systems and processes, having SOPs being set, okay, one window clearance, being actually enforced, things are getting smoother. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to, uh, you know, go back to the audience, but I just, because <laughs> I can already see people disagreeing. Uh, Mr. Singh, you've heard all of, all of the, uh, the views on the panel. Are there any comments you'd like to make from what you've heard? Let me <clears throat> briefly give the context it will be better well Maharashtra is I will not say is the first law which has come to regulate this sector we have history of MOFA then our own law then our own re regulations our own MRT Act so this real estate sector has been regulated maybe certain deficiencies were there uh, those issues apart. So context is that so far as Maharashtra is concerned, it should not uh, come as a uh, as a anything which is absolutely new to this environment of Maharashtra. Now basically a uh, lot of apprehensions, I call it apprehension in the sense they may not be real. Let's say what is RERA? Basically, this is an act to regulate and provide a transparent field for all the stakeholders. It's true, some of the speakers uh, uh, have mentioned that when you go too down a path, then perhaps the surgery makes you too up the same path. So maybe consumers' interest, uh, which uh, anyway appears to be the mandate that you need to provide a, f a field where consumers' interests are protected. At the same time, the promoters' interests are also protected. It's not one-sided law. If you read this, uh, this thing, it talks of responsibilities of promoters, real estate agents, it, it talks of those. Even consumers, it talks of, it, it's not silent on that. No, this is a broad law which has been framed at the government of uh, India level. That's a national law. Now what rule will do? Basically, where there are no substantive provision in the law or where law leaves the methodology to be prescribed, then it's a rule which needs to cover those areas so that this act and the provisions of the act can be implemented in the way to achieve the objective which has been settled there or which has been set in the act. Now what is the objective as I said right, uh, rightly? It's, objective is not to kill any industrial area and particularly uh, if you look at from Maharashtra perspective, all of us are aware that's this is one of the sector which contributes one of the largest share to our GDP, state GDP. We all are uh, aware of those facts. And therefore, while framing rule, we have to be pragmatic, practical, but to the extent we can do it under the law. Because if substantive provisions of law doesn't provide something, 
then it's not possible for rule to take care of those uh, situations. We had a lot of discussion. It's not that uh, this rule making is a simple exercise. We had a lot of discussions with uh, NADETCO, MHI, CREDI, consumers forums. So last few months we have been discussing these issues and most of the concerns which uh, I must say I cannot disclose it what we have provided for because I am bound by those secrecy uh, this thing because it's not put in public domain so I can't comment on that. But let me tell you uh, broader uh, issues which we feel uh, so far as I am concerned I have been in this sector either urban development or housing for last 13 to 15 years. Uh, in various capacities at UD Secretary, SRA CEO, MADA VP, UD Secretary, then few municipal, uh, few corporations, municipal commissioner, in MCGM as additional municipal commissioners. So uh, broadly we understand the uh, issues and the concerns of all stakeholders. We had a lot of discussion and let me assure this house that it will be a, a rules which I will not claim that will be perfect, but should largely cover the concerns, should largely cover the concerns. For example, now it was being mentioned that uh, it will be <coughs> offense of three years or this thing. You please understand that today's law is worse in this respect than RERA. Now, MOFA only created an offense. Once you create an offense, then it's left to police and judicial systems. Now, what is RERA provision? RERA's provision, if you say, the offence is disobedience to the orders of the authority. So, uh, you please look at from that perspective that you have been you have been given a forum, mm. a regulator, which will first hear you. And who will be regulator if you see the qualifications and their uh, this thing? He will be a man from uh, who is in the knowledge of things of this sector. So he will be aware of those issues, what is being discussed today or uh, which is the concern of this thing. And it is expected that regulator will first hear, go through the, uh, those issues and pass an appropriate reasonable order. Only when that order is not complied or the tribunal order is not complied, it becomes an offence. It's a major shift, I will say. That's a, for the protection of the industry, which is not available today under MOFA. In MOFA, you can be straightway, uh, FIR can be launched, and there have been few cases uh, because of that circular from DG uh, earlier. So these are positive aspects, which also we must think. What is RERA trying to achieve? It says registration is must. For registration, you need, it has provided a lot of uh, uh, documents or information which need to submit. And if you go through that, even today you are doing, even today most of us are doing, few of additionality will be provided by rules. And therefore, uh, then Authority has to take a call about the period which we were saying and uh, what should be the period. Now, period is one of the uh, main main variable of the registration order. But in the registration order, it has to be said and it will come first from the developer and when it is not supposed to be reasonable, only then perhaps uh, authority will interfere and negotiate or uh, hear you and say, you know, this appears to be unreasonable. Otherwise, prerogative first is with the developer to say what is the milestone and by what time you need to complete these projects. Now, issue is the law provides for force measure. So that's the automatic uh, route which you are talking. But law also gives leeway somewhere to take care of the issues which um, um, Abhishek was trying to mention. Uh, particularly in scenario like Mumbai uh, where you have a lot of regulations, you have a lot of uh, authorities, you have a lot of tribunals, you have courts and those things. So please wait for uh, rule to draft to come up. Uh, we have tried to address, in what way I may not be able to uh, disclose it, but we have tried to address those issues. So hopefully uh, it should 
So, uh, uh, as, as, as a customer, one of the concerns is that uh, supply will come down and prices will go up because of RERA. Is that a concern that you've taken into consideration? You see, consideration? let me uh, be slightly blunt in this. Well. We need transformation and we need cleansing in this sector. Let me be very blunt. Now, transitional period, like ongoing project for mentioned. Again, it requires registration, means what? You will again have to provide for ki by what time you need to complete this project. So that will be one of the, uh, this thing. Concerns may be you have entered into agreements, various agreements. So concern may be those agreements should be intact. And then it should not hit the earlier agreements or those things. I understand that and uh, uh, we understand uh, those concerns. And from consumer's point of view, if you look at it, if you have got, let's say, 100 rupees from him and you have worked only for 70 rupees, I think we should be ready to say that remaining 30 rupees, part of it, you should plow back in the system for uh, completing that remaining construction part of it. And let me tell you, with uh, this kind of regulation, uh, sorry, this kind of law and regulation, I agree with uh, CGM SBI that system, once it is registered, now investors have a lot of comfort in investing in this sector, which today is not available. It will go in a long way in transforming the sector in the, in the sense that once a project is registered with RERA, and RERA gives you approval for registering, then that is that that will give a tremendous amount of comfort to investors. That is true. Uh, not asking you about the specifics of the rules. Um, we do know that Maharashtra has been working on its final draft. When can we expect the final draft? Any what time. happens after the draft is? Is it open for uh, objections? Few days, yes, for suggestions, objections, yes. Okay. And post that, it becomes the rule. <coughs> yeah. Okay. One last question. So you did, of course, mention that the regulator, that the, uh, you know, the individual that who will be picked will be someone who understands the sector really well. Is he likely to be a civil officer who spent about 30 years in the industry? No, law provides in for… In UD secretary you know, and you know, various uh, other posts? Uh, well, uh, law provides for qualification mm -hmm. and uh, law also provides methodology. Rules have further elaborated those processes, but law provides qualification, uh, what sort of qualifications are required, it also provides for a committee, law itself provides for, for a committee, committee to yeah, to, uh, to make a recommendation, well, ultimately power is of government to a point, but it does provide of a committee to be headed by chief justice or any judge appointed by him. Now one will have to believe in fairness of this kind of mechanism mm -hmm. that uh, uh, recommendations of names will be of that class and it will give government that opportunity to pick one of the best. Okay, uh, is, does anybody in the panel have any responses to what we've heard Mr. Shrikant Singh say or any questions? Regarding the price, uh, you see, uh, till the implementation actually happens, there will be a lot of rush uh, by the builders to complete the ongoing projects because the, all the ongoing projects will uh, be coming under RERA. So there will be rush to complete the projects that will bring a lot of finished product in the market. So in the short term, uh, although the launches may come down, but in the short term because the supply will be there. But in the medium term, yes, initially there may be some uh, slowdown in the launches, but with the cheap money flowing into the uh, sector uh, because of uh, the improved transparency, uh, maybe that will balance the price. That's Mr. Shah? I would say that uh, there is going to be, this transition is going to be very important. The newspapers, if last six months, if anybody has seen since 1st of May what has happened, suddenly there is a spurt of so many launches and I believe every day half of the newspaper is with the color supplement of the offer of the new launches, which everybody wants to catch up before this law comes. Because once the central government decides to bring into implementation the rest of the RERA, then in that event within three months the project will have to be registered provided the rules are in place which I believe that the grapevine says that the rules will be in place in uh, probably a very short time. As a result of which this price business will probably get uh, slightly balances, slightly imbalance and the, uh, the stocks may go little down because there is going to be a lull before the industry comes to terms with this particular law. One thing I want to surely refer to that this law refers to disclosure by the builder saying that 
what is going to be the period within which he is expecting to complete the project your registration your website registration everything will be only for that period which you say you will complete it thereafter there it will be extended as presently advised only for a period of one year for force majeure conditions otherwise your project will be taken away this is a one of the most serious concerns with the industry has which in private discussions with their advisors and consultants they have and the government will have to expand this definition of force majeure where the force majeure could be the the planning authority or maybe environmental body or maybe some another regulatory authority intervening and not giving the permissions or completion then in that event a project cannot be taken away or given away to the allottees or their association that part is a very serious concern which i would like to leave it with uh, mr singh today because whether i will get his ear next time and when i will get it i do not know so i just want to share this with him that if the rules are in making that a force majeure definition and the category and the circumstances will have to really take care of this kind of involuntary situations with which the, the promoters and the proponents of the project will probably be faced that's an important thing yeah, i'll ask everyone we have to keep it really short mr hirandan uh, i think uh, what mr shekan singh uh, said was correct transition is going to be difficult but since the change where everybody is very uncomfortable when change really happens but i'm sure we'll be able to manage it and other things we hope that the government and the machinery will really take care of the concerns that we have especially in terms of the liquidity that is needed in the intervening period for those ongoing projects i think that's the concern we have to leave on the table so that we don't have too many of the defaults of people not wanting to register because they can't register because they don't have the funds that they need to bring on the table well i think uh, mr singh has promised us uh, that it will be a fantastic regulation rules and regulation and i hope it is it will it will definitely help the sector but let me tell you one thing at least uh, at least the government is thinking about this sector see infrastructure see hospitality all sectors are reeling under stress so at least at least something is done for the real estate sector good bad we will it will take you see with when the telecom regulators came came in everybody was worried when 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 insurance regulators came in everybody was worried i i believe this sector is uh, set to go uh, be, uh, it will it will do well in the near future uh, if the rules are in uh, rightly uh, properly done yeah so uh, i firmly believe that there will be lot of consolidation there will be a clear distinction between the men and the boys there is going to be a transformation any transformation unlike change is going to be painful i always feel that transformation is like you know a caterpillar becoming a butterfly you know, which is irreversible so in the long term i think it's a good act good for the consumer good for all of us uh, mr singh i have one last question for you you did of course mention that um, the team that's writing the rules has consulted with various stakeholders in the industry and there is a view in general that the rules will sort of be final but that consultation process continues with the regulator and the rules will evolve over a period of maybe the next 5 10 years tell us what that process is so you see the first how it is staged out is in law first is the law which is made by parliament second will be rules which will come to provide for implementation of this act Now, there are a lot of things which will be covered by regulations to be done by authority themselves, and uh, with maybe prior approval of government. Now, issue is, uh, it's a process. Now, rule also is not a, 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 not a thing which cannot be modified or amended subsequently based on the experience or inputs or certain thing. So, it's a dynamic uh, instrument, uh, and. more dynamic than law because law making is much more uh, process oriented and a tough job to get through but rule making to that extent is more dynamic easier uh, to uh, to modify it so when by experience or on the maybe recommendations of authority certain things have to be changed certainly government is always open to this kind of ideas and these kind of recommendations so there is no to open it i think that's a word of comfort that everybody here will appreciate we've run out of time i want to thank the gentlemen on the panel for giving us your time and uh, i'd like to thank the audience as well 
Thank you very much. You can watch live TV on our website mbnow.in. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Magic Bricks Now. And don't forget to click the like button. You can also follow us on Twitter at Magic Bricks Now. To stay updated with all our programming, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel by logging on to youtube.com forward slash Magic Bricks Now.